Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 for part 2 of this week's update where I shall be delving into the depths of the Iridium production and looking at a few other things besides. And so we, we talked about this a bit last week, how there is a there is a system over here on Kothar that's trying to produce iridium, and it was running into an issue that, it, that there was no um, there was no enriched vulcanite available. Now, as you can see, things have improved somewhat. There is now three and a half thousand of it in this chest in this warehouse over here that's being fed in, and so that means we now have a stream of uh, of the of the um, Iridium blast cake coming out, and then therefore a stream of the uh, iridium ingots coming out, and those are being fed into a train, brought up here, put into the spaceship, yada yada yada, and that actually seems to now finally be working. But oh, it was it was it was a mission to get it to this point. And so we shall start over here on Kothar at what's probably the end of the, the the bit that was struggling. And so we had we had the system before where we, we had some some enriched iridium was, enriched vulcanite was coming in. As you can see, there's some on this train here. That's that's working nicely. It's being passed through here, and then and now there is a train here to take it away. So uh, Mike has put in this train. The train will then bring it down to here, unload it, unload it here, and and, there, and and now that seems to be working quite well. However, we need to make sure that we have a nice healthy stream of this um, of this enriched vulcanite coming in in order to keep the system happy. And as I say, as of right now, it seems to be okay. That we've still got just under 3,000 of it available there, and we are now about to start topping off this train, which is about a bit less than half full. And so I don't think that's actually going to fill up from there. But that's coming down from space. Up in space, there is okay. There's another eight thousand uh, enriched vulcanite up here, so there's actually a decent amount of it around. And so I think this does is starting to look like the problem is solved. As you can see over here, the trains come up is unloading, and so the idea is that hopefully it will be able to fill up this spaceship all the way, and then the spaceship will depart and go off and go and get some more. And that is possible because over in Norvis orbit, a large quantity of enriched vulcanite is being brought over from Agnea by this spaceship, dropped off here, unloaded into the in, 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 into this warehouse, and then an appropriate amount of it is then passed through and put into these ones. So at the moment you can see there's uh, about 25,000 of it, and that's the amount we want to send out basically each time and try and keep that sort of quantity available over in Kothar. And it's been, as I say, it's been a little bit of a struggle to get to that point, but we do seem to more or less be on top of it now. And the big change we've made is having basically having larger and larger and larger quantities of it brought over from Agnea. And so over on Agnea, well previously we had um, systems in here that were tapping off the the enriched vulcanite that was being produced by the uh, by the by, by the vulcanite processing and bringing it over here to the delivery cannons that were in this space here and there, that was launching it up into space. Now in order to get it flowing a bit more uh, reliably, we were tapping that off and putting it onto the belt that was going down to the spaceship, which was working which was kind of working when we didn't need very much of it. But the problem was over in in uh, Norbit, we we're starting we we're getting to the point where we just had too much vulcanite and too much junk and the enriched vulcanite wasn't able to get through. So in order to sort of to, to help that, I put in a separate belt here to bring the uh, bring the enriched vulcanite down from these two setups here, which these are the ones that are feeding from the uh, from the core mining. That'll then bring the enriched vulcanite down here, down its own own private belt, and load it into this warehouse here, where it can then be put into the trains along with the junk, as you can see. So the train comes around, picks up mostly enriched vulcanite at this, at this point, because we seem to already have plenty of normal vulcanite cubes, and then and, and take, it away, so take it away. The other thing I realised is that if I, if, I, if I just did that, then very quickly the whole system would fail, because previously I had the vulcanite and the junk going down the same belt, and that won't work, because if you try and do that, then the... And, and and you're not taking the vulcanite, then that'll jam up the junk belt, and the system will all grind to a halt. So I then had to put in, I had to then split off the junk and the vulcanite into separate belts and feed those down here. We're then looking at the um, amount of, the, we're then looking at the signals that are coming in from Norbit. So at the moment, we're requesting 15,000 enriched vulcanite, but we already have 132,000 more vulcanite blocks than we actually need. So which is why we're only feeding in the um, the enriched vulcanite, as you, as you can clearly see. And so we're using these systems up here to say, well, when, the, when that's less than zero, we don't want to feed the enriched vulcanite through. When that's less than zero, we don't want, oh, that should be vulcanite blocks. When vulcanite blocks is less than zero, we don't want to feed that, we, we, uh, we want to feed that one through. And then all the way around here, we're saying when these are less than 50. So this is still meaning we won't kick in with the uh, with the um, vulcanite production that runs from the mines until we're until we're running very very low on it from the from the uh, core mining. So the idea is still we're trying to produce most of it from core mining, but as and when there's a shortage of it, we will then start taking it from other places as well. And this does seem to be working. It has occurred to me that we don't have enough bandwidth on this belt here. So I think ideally I could do with putting in another belt that goes all the way around here, but I'm running a bit low on um, on blue belts on this planet. So I might need to do some 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 kind of funny business in order to sort all of that out. I've also ended up with some stuff in the chest of shame which needs a bit of a clear out. 
but it, but generally this is kind of mostly working sort of really and so i think we're in we're in quite a good position where we are we've got this steady one blue belt feeding through uh, feeding through the uh, enriched vulcanite through and i think that will hopefully be enough to keep the uh, to, to keep the systems out on agnea happy so this, as as as, you, as ever, gets, this will then get shipped up to uh, to, to um, Agnorbit, where it's going to be unloaded here by the by, by the system, and then put into the, put in uh, put in over here. So as you can see, we've got okay at this point, we've got um, eight and a half thousand uh, enriched vulcanite and three and a half thousand cubes in the uh, in there. So we are still shipping out a little bit of vulcanite, even though we've got rather a lot of it. I think that might just be sort of emptying out some buffers before before things started to flow nicely. Um, but this ship is now very very nearly full. We've got room for another. Okay, there's another maybe another sort of 300 stacks going going into there. So another three trains, no, another two trains, and the ship will be ready to go with its with its massive cargo of enriched vulcanite, which you can then take back to uh, Norvis orbit, unload here, as I was saying. So the, the hope is that as now that we're not asking for as much vulcanite as we were before, hopefully we'll be able to take some of it away. It'll get used up by all of the other systems around the place, and that'll empty out these warehouses to the extent that we can unload from here a bit more reliably. Because we do have a bit of a problem here where we've got where these these warehouses are kind of full I mean, it's not completely full, but it's got a lot of junk in it, and this junk we want this junk to flow out and go up these belts over here into this into this chest uh, to be taken away by the trains to go off to be recycled. So it's not working quite as nicely as I would ideally like. Maybe we should switch over to so these ones. So have the, the this one only unloads vulcanite, and this one unloads everything, all the other junk. Um, but I'm not sure whether we can realistically do that in the space we've got because there's going to be too many different things in here. If we sort the warehouse, you can see we've got coal, stone, sand, iron, copper rare metals, uranium ore, and I think it's potentially going to be barrels of pyroflux as well. So it's eight different things, and unfortunately you can only load, you can only program one of these things up to having uh, five different things filtered on it. It might make sense to try and unload the junk by a different, on, on a different system than the, uh, than the Vulcanite, but it's going to be a little bit fiddly, which we'll have to, have to, have to see. And it's probably going to be much, much simpler to just use up a bit more of the Vulcanite and make sure we don't have quite so much of it here. Because look, we've got, we've got 102,000 Vulcanite in there, another 102,000 there. So we've got 300,000 Vulcanite in these, in these three warehouses and so yeah let's try and use some of that up and get rid of a bit of it and uh, then things will be a little things will calm down a little bit and things should start to work a bit better mike has done a number of extra tweaks over here such as increasing all of these to uh, productivity module sixes i noticed we've now apparently run out of um, iridium on the inputs so that's uh, <laughs> that's fun um I guess he's going to have to do some boosting of the additional mines, basically, because we don't have, we don't have enough coming in. Um, I don't know how the core mining is getting on. Let's have a look at that, actually, because that had only just been implemented last time. So now it should have had time to... Uh, oh, yeah, there's, there's a train going there with, the, uh, with a load of the um, iridite core chunks. This is filling up gradually. That's, that's much less than a train's worth. So, yeah, it looks like the train is keeping on top of it. And it's all getting pulverized down here. We see we've got um, a mostly full warehouse here. I think this looks like we need a bit more. Yeah, we need more core chunk pro processing down here. I think um, in order to get more of the irid iridite out to to, uh, to cook into the irid iridium ingots. But also, I think we need more straight up normal mines that are just digging it up and crushing it and passing it through. So yeah, there's as ever there is still a little bit more work needs to be done on the um, on the iridium processing. But it has got a lot better. Uh, Mike has been very very proud of the production graph because if we look it over the last Mermanerma time it's been going it has had steady periods where it's been running at almost 800 at about 800 per minute which is good to be honest um problem is there's been all these dips in here now I think some of these dips are due to a lack of yeah I think this dip was due to a lack of the enriched vulcanite then these dips maybe the enriched vulcanite or maybe maybe due to a lack of input or maybe the drop down to this sort of level has been a lack of input it's kind of hard to tell but it's definitely getting better and if we let the ship run a couple of times and bring out some more uh, a bit more of the um, the enriched vulcanite, so we've got a, a bit of a backlog of it, or a bit of a surplus of it over here on this planet. Then hopefully that'll make things run a little bit more reliably in the future, and we should get to the point where the iridium is just is just working. He's also done a few little things like pulling the stone out of the um, out of out of the uh, core crushing over here to take it away to be. Uh, I assume this goes over to be reprocessed. Yeah, okay. It goes into it goes into a mine outpost uh, output down here, which is then going off up, up here to be turned into the in, into the hydrogen chloride that's required for the for, for iridium processing. Good. So that's being uh, recycled nicely there. And he's just generally spent a lot of time sort of staring at it and 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 sort of and, and fretting a little bit and just trying to keep think trying to keep things up and running at a decent rate. And to be fair, that's exactly what I've been doing with it and with the with the vulcanite and the enrichment and so on. And just trying to watch things because we he, the problem with having these. The problem with space exploration is you set up these big systems that go across several planets and then you realise there's a problem with one of them 
and so you go off to fix it, but the fix happens on a different planet. So you then have to wait for a buffer to fill up on that planet, and then a spaceship to fly, and a buffer to trickle through, and then another spaceship to fly, and then the system to pull, pull through on this planet, and then you have to wait until that runs through twice, so it runs through all of that buffer and then asks for another one, before you can really tell whether everything's working at, at the proper speed or not. So there's quite a lot of latency between putting in a fix and finding out whether anything is actually whether that fix has actually worked. That hasn't been quite so bad for me, because I've been able to switch back and forth between fiddling with the space spaceships as I was talking about in the last video and then fiddling around with the enriched Vulcanite that I've been talking about in this video. Um, but I think Mike has just spent a lot of his time just sort of staring at this and beating his head against a wall. So uh, I, uh, for, for his sake, I hope, it can, I hope he can get it up and running and, and, and working nicely uh, quite soon. While we were watching the uh, the Agnea ship buzzing around and, and and doing sort of appropriate spaceship things, uh, this meant we were looking at it a lot a lot more closely than we normally were. And Tristan and I noticed that it landed in Agnea orbit and then immediately departed without actually picking up a full load of of stuff first. And that's not supposed to be able to happen. We've got the system over here that watches for when there are three ticks, then it sends a spaceship launch signal. And so you shouldn't get those three ticks until the ship's ready to go. And those three ticks come from over here, where we're watching for us and everything equals zero. And that's the signals coming from the uh, the inserters up here telling us what they're doing. So in theory, if we if we get a zero from there, then that means these inserters have stopped doing things. Therefore, the ship there, therefore we've unloaded everything. Therefore, the ship can consider going. We also monitor for there being something in the warehouses over here to make sure that there's um, that the ship is as full as it can get because if there's something if there's nothing in the warehouse then the ship might not be full it might just be waiting for stuff and we wait for these inserters to be idle for a certain amount of time that's de dealt with by these timers down here and so that um, that allows us to essentially keep it keep an eye on the spaceship and when it's completely when it's unloaded all the stuff it's supposed to unload and it's been lo fully loaded with other stuff that's coming in from the planet then we can send it the signal to depart. Unfortunately, we suspect that if the spe when the spaceship first lands in the very first tick, these inserters are all idle. Not they're not holding anything because they haven't had a chance to pick anything up. The, there's there's stuff in the warehouses because trains have come like this like this one to unload in, into the warehouses. So there's stuff there, and also these inserters haven't done anything for a, an amount of time because the spaceship has been away. So if if it checks for whether it's whether it's safe to leave or not at exactly the wrong time, then the spaceship can leave instantly without loading up any of the stuff it's supposed to be collecting um, and so we, we we're struggling a little bit with this problem because it's one I've seen before in back in 0.5 I think that was what was causing my spaceships to sometimes cut the spaceship trains in half um, because the the, um, the the signal network isn't perfectly in sync it takes one tick for a signal to get through a combinator so we might need to increase this to watching for four ticks and have a fourth tick being a timer that says the spaceship has been here for longer than an amount of time or something like that. There are ways we can fix it, but it's going to add in some extra complexity and it's a bit of a headache for something that sort of, we sort of feel like shouldn't really happen. So, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll need to delve into that and, uh, and, and try and struggle our way through it. Over on the Holmium planet of Njord, Tristan has been continuing with the upgrade. So I mentioned last week that he'd upgraded all of the uh, chemical plants in here to, to advanced chemical plants, which means they're producing, they're running much, much quicker. They've got more modules in them. They're just generally better. He's also done the furnaces up here, which means these can turn the, uh, the powdered Holmium uh, into into actual into whole, into liquid holmium more more quickly more efficiently and because they run more quickly you don't need as many modules overall they don't take any extra modules compared to the um, the industrial furnaces but they are they run faster so whilst you don't you don't get a, a productivity boost you do get a reduction in the number of modules you need to put in these machines which is why he's been able to upgrade all of these to prod sixes which is great and then he's got the uh, casting machines above there that's, that are making the actual lingots. This system seems to have stopped. I wonder what it's run out of this time. It has run out of blue balls. Uh, why do we not have any... What, what, what are we missing over here? Is it cryonite? No, no, we've got cryonite and plastic. But we've run out of nitric acid. Tristan, you've run out of nitric acid. There's something for you to look at next time. Um, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Rare metals. Okay, it's due to a lack of rare metals over here. I wonder where they come from. Are they shipped over by spaceship? Probably. That's something, something else to bring in then, I guess. And also over here, you need, speaking, speaking of the uh, anion exchange beads, these need to be upgraded to uh, the, the more advanced chemical plants as well, and probably better beacons. And that'll mean they at least get a little bit of a, a, a productivity boost out of that, and so the, uh, the rare metals coming in down here will go a bit further. 
Up in Njordbit, because he's been getting rid of all of the old modules, the tier 2s, um, that were in all of the chemical plants before, uh, and so they can be sent back and be upgraded to, uh, to proper modules, there, he's also, um, he's had to do some funny business with the, uh, with the loaders along here. Now, in the long run, he wants to upgrade all of these to, um, to the, the long superior inserters, because those can unload a train almost as quickly as the, as the loaders can. And you can blacklist with them as well. Then he'd be able to just blacklist the things that are being sent down, instead of having to whitelist all the things that are being sent up. So this is a little bit overcomplicated at this point. But as, as it is, because the all set up slightly differently. They're, they're all trying to unload Holmium because that's a thing there's lots and lots of. And then the rest of the stuff has been sort of split out between them. So here we've got um, dead batteries and core fragments. Here we've got raw rare metals. Here we've got iron and copper and so on all the way across. And so this means that in total everything will get unloaded somewhere and the Holmium gets unloaded everywhere. So it will work but it's not quite as good as the other system but the other system takes a bit more setup and he hasn't done that yet. Last week I talked about how over on Norvis we have an area, we have an old area that, that was making blue circuits in the past, and it was it was working. It was making blue circuits, but it was using the older, less efficient recipe rather than the new shiny holmium-based recipe. And so some upgrades were required. Uh, we've been, Mark has built a new area that will make all the blue circuits in in in, in bulk, but this means we've got this air, old area over here that has quite a lot of stuff left in it. Um, so I don't just want to slap a deconstruction planner across it and delete the whole lot because that would be an absolute bot, be a bot frenzy forever. And there's thousands and thousands and thousands of glass and plastic and now uh, and and copper and everything else. Uh, so I've been sort of trying to occasionally fill up. I, I, so I brought out an extra train of copper because that had run out, and now and so that ran for a little while, and now we've run out of stone bricks. So I could bring over a train of stone bricks. I think that'd be a bit more than we need. So I could bring over a train of stone bricks manually and just partly unload it, um, and that will get it sort of trickling through a little bit it's, it's all a bit the problem the problem is it's very very hard to actually empty all of these warehouses out in in in, in balance now i think i think the correct thing to do would be to just get rid of all of these inserters across here like that then call for a train like this That'll get us a train. That'll get us this train coming out to bring up, bring us those stone bricks. It will then only be able to unload from the front wagon, so we'll only get a quarter of a train's worth. Uh, we can then dispatch it again manually to get rid of it, and then let the system run and see how much of the of the of the glass and the plastic and the um, and, and the and the and the silicon is left afterwards, and then maybe carry on doing this, calling in just a little bit of a train's worth of each of the things, and just just trying to get rid of the stuff because there is still, as I say, there's still thousands and thousands of glass along here that I would just want to get rid of rather than have the bots pick it all up. So it, it's tricky, but you know, it, it, it's, it's not serious though. So if, as long, if I just sort of tinker with it once per stream and pull in a, a bit of a train's worth of whatever we need, then that'll, then eventually we'll get it down to a reasonably small amount of stuff and that get the bots to just tidy up the rest of it and shove it all into the chest of shame or something. <laughs> It'll probably work. And so this is brings us on to the researches. Uh, we have now started, we have now invented radar construction pylons. I don't believe we've actually made any of these yet, so I can't have a play around with it and show, it what, show you what it does. But it potentially could be a combination of radar, uh, rover port, and, uh, and power pylons. Um, maybe or maybe not substations. We will, we will see. Um, I think some testing is going to be required for that one. We've done even more deep space zone discovery. We did 31 to uh, 40, uh, so that's found us a new, found us more and more and more places around the around the uh, local galaxy that we can go out to uh, for looking for resources. And by resources, I probably only mean arcospheres because, in gen in my experience, there's no real reason to go off to uh, planets in other solar systems. Certainly not the more distant ones, but. Yeah, probably, but if we if we can find lots and lots of asteroid fields, it's worth skipping out there with a long-range ship and going looking for arcospheres. But shh, spoilers, we'll tell you about that. We'll tell you about arcospheres later. <laughs> and we have done mining productivity eleven. This is um, this as 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 I've said before, gets us more stuff out of the ground every time a mining action happens. So it's great when we're running with coal mining because you know it, it means we get we're now getting more than twice as much out of each core mine as we normally would. And since getting more out of core mines is a lot harder than just putting down an extra one. Having this having this mine productivity is fantastic. Technically this one's only in progress so we haven't actually researched uh, deep space catalogues yet but it's um, it's just finished now so we'll, we'll, we'll take a quick look at it. Uh, and this then from this you, you can see that this this is this is making the first catalogue for the first tier of the deep space science packs uh, which is going to be exciting, difficult and very very naquium heavy I imagine. So yeah there we go. So this is where all the nanomaterials I've been talking about are going to go. So interestingly that doesn't seem to take any naquium so that's just going to that's just going to take in nanomaterial. That one's going to take in okay a little bit of naquium required for that one. So one ingot per per card, not too bad. 
That one's going to take in Nacreotact Crystals, but again, one crystal per card, not too bad. And then we need to do an Interstellar Void Probe, which means we need to, send, we need to do the Rocket pr Probe launching again. In much the same way we've done with the Solar Probes and the uh, Asteroid Belt Probes, uh, where we'll just, so we'll just land a specialised ship here. It'll pick up a probe and a probe rocket, launch the probe rocket out, get the data from it, pull it back in again, and then feed the cards through into the spaceship, which can then launch off, take, bring them back over, yada, yada, yada. Nice, nice, nice and straightforward. And so put it, and then putting all of those together will allow us to make Deep Space Catalogues, and then presumably from that, we will be able to start making Deep Space Science 1. Um, so all that stands between us and that is um, is going out to a distant asteroid field and getting some Naquium. Lovely. <laughs> something to look forward to. And yes, definitely something to look forward to. It's going to be, it's going to be uh, complicated and fiddly, I'm sure, but it's going to be very, very interesting to do. So come along and join us next Thursday when I shall be making some, uh, some um, headroads into that. And uh, hopefully Mike will be going out and putting down some more erudite mines because, I mean, it's getting better. We have, we now do have some iridium in the system, but it could be, but it's a little bit, it could do with a little bit more improvement before we, before we call it actually done. I will also be back on Tuesday for a, another stream where I should be playing some more Satisfactory. Um, I think I'm probably going to go out look, looking for Sulphur, but uh, it's, it's also possible I might get distracted by something completely different and just spend the whole whole session driving tractors around. We shall see. <laughs> it, should, it should be interesting anyway, so um, I'm, I'm quite enjoying Satisfactory. It's, uh, it's not as deep as Factorio, but it does have an extra dimension to play with, and it's, it, it's, it's something different, so it's, it's a novelty, and, I'm, and yeah, I, I quite enjoy that. On Wednesday, there will be a tutorial video coming out, and something slightly different, but still tutorial-y related for, uh, for the supporters, if I can manage to get it finished, which I hope to be able to do. Finally, there will, of course, be these catch-up videos coming out on Saturday and Monday of next week as well, so uh, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you're following, make sure you're on the Discord, all of those sort of things, so you'll uh, you'll, you'll find them as they as they come out and uh, and see and, and see everything that's going on on the channel. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and the streams that go with them, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.